Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 19th, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. We knew that last night was one of the biggest migration nights of the year, so we got to the Braddock Bay West Spit around 5.20 a.m. And the sky was really beautiful, and there was a fair bit of wave action. There was a fairly strong southerly wind, so between the sound of the wind and the lake, it made it a little difficult to bird. But there was a really beautiful sunrise below that layer of clouds. While looking out over the lake, we spotted this flock of 19 Dunlin. You can see the black bellies on them. Photographing flyover warblers and captured this black Bernian warbler. Here's a female type bobolink. You can see it's kind of plain looking, but you can see those really spiky tail feathers. Here's a black bellied plover. Notice that black in the underwing area that rolls out other similar species such as American golden plover. Here we have a flock of cedar waxwings, and we had over 300 waxwings throughout the morning in many small to medium-sized groups. And there really haven't been that many waxwings around recently, so it was kind of surprising to see such a big flight of them. I knew the winds were good for a hawk flight, so I got over to Braddock Bay Park around 8 a.m. to get set up for the hawk watch. It was a beautiful morning with partly sunny skies that became mostly sunny. Winds were fairly strong out of the south, and the wind stayed that way into the early afternoon, but eventually it did cloud over and become a dark overcast, along with shifting winds that went northwest and then eventually to a northeast lake breeze that shut the flight down. And eventually the count was ended early due to rain showers. Here's two green herons migrating by together in the morning. Here's a flyby Baltimore Oriole. We had a couple dozen northern harriers today. You can see this one's a juvenile, like most of the ones we're seeing this time of year. Very plain underneath, not really any of that heavy streaking like we see on the adult females, and very plain here in the underwing patagial area. Broad-winged hawk was one of the birds of the day, and we had mostly juveniles today. There's still a few adults mixed in, but Almost all juveniles, and a lot of them are molting feathers, especially these inner primary feathers. So broad wings are kind of a small, compact beautio, somewhat pointed wingtips, and a glide, they usually have a fairly straight edge to the wing. This photo is a little bit funny, but it's a sandhill crane dropping into the marsh. You can see the neck bent down here, the head looking down, and the long legs extended. Here's a juvenile red-tailed hawk. You can see those dark patagial bars here, and the belly band. And it's a juvenile, so it does not have a dark trailing edge to the wing or a red tail yet. And if you look at the eye, I believe there we are seeing the nictitating membrane, which is sort of this translucent layer that they can blink that helps protect their eye. We had a small number of migrating exhibitors today. Here we have a juvenile Cooper's hawk, and we see it has a full crop, which means it has eaten recently. That's this bulge you see here. And here we have a juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. So notice the small head, and it looks like a big eyeball on a small head. It gives it more of a cute look to the face. And if you look at that tail, it's not even just squared off, but it's extremely notched. And that's a trait that you see more often on the male sharp-shinned hawks, which are smaller than the female. So this is probably a juvenile male. And I've been told that those are the ones that migrate latest in the season. Here's another look at a juvenile broad-winged hawk. Again, notice that straight trailing edge to the wing, somewhat pointed wing tips, sort of a medium length tail, and sort of a brown, almost teardrop streaking underneath, but it's a little bit thicker than you see on things like Cooper's hawks. Here's a really fresh juvenile bald eagle. So these are ones that are born south of us over the winter and then migrate north this time of year. You can see that really dark head and underside to the body, a lot of white in the wing pit area, and an even trailing edge to the wing. Just a really fresh bird. You see almost no feather wear at all. Here we see two different species. So on the left, we have a bird that has very pointed wings. So we should be suspecting that it's a falcon. And we see dark streaking underneath. And this bird had a very aggressive flight style. And we can see a dark tail with some white bands. So this is a merlin. And at the top right, we see a bird with a very forked tail. So this is actually a barn swallow. At one point, someone 
pointed out a group of four bald eagles out in front of us in the distance. And so I put my scope up there just to take a quick look at them to see what their ages were and make sure they were bald eagles and no golden eagles mixed in. And as I was scanning up there, I came across this bird, which was much more distant at that point. But I was happy to see the season's first American white pelican. And this is a species that we occasionally get. We get them most years. I think last year we didn't have any, and this was the first one for this year. But such a cool species because they're huge birds. You can see this cool white plumage with the black trailing edge to the wing. And they just have that massive bill with the uh, throat pouch and even a little knob on top of the bill. So really cool bird to see soaring around over Braddock Bay. And shortly after that, I noticed that someone who was down in front of the platform, who's one of the best birders in the county, was using a spotting scope and looking up at something. So I looked up to see what he was looking at and spotted this bird, which is a northern goshawk. So it's not the best photo because the bird was really distant, but goshawks are exhibitors, so they have long tails, although this one's in a soar, so the tail is a bit fanned out. Um, but you can see those wings that have really bulging secondaries and then get more pointed near the wingtip. And again, this is a really distant photo, but in the spotting scope, I could see the silhouette and the shape a little bit better, but kind of a small head compared to Cooper's hawks and just um, a really big bird. It's more of the shape of a sharp-shinned hawk, but just a big bird. In fact, it was soaring with a broad-winged hawk, and this goshawk was bigger than the broad wing. So that was a good supporting trait to let us be sure that we had the identification correct. And this is the seventh northern goshawk this season, which is the most I've ever had in a single season. My first season here at Braddock Bay was 2019 when we had six northern goshawks. And then of course last year and the year before we didn't have any goshawks at all. So really cool to get seven goshawks this season. Here's a male American kestrel that was diving into the marsh in front of us hunting. And that sandhill crane we looked at a minute ago was actually part of a group of five that landed down in the marsh. And here they are taking off and leaving the marsh. And towards the end of the count, it was really gloomy and we had our first common nighthawks of the season. Since we were done a bit early, a few of us took a trip over to the Lakeville Community Church Trail to see what we could find. And the highlight there was getting to see a couple of Philadelphia vireos, which is a species that I don't get to see. Uh, some years I don't get to see any at all, so really cool to see those. And after that, we did a quick run through the firehouse woods. This ruby-throated hummingbird perched right in front of our group. We had this yellow-bellied flycatcher, which was my first of the year. And again, it's a species that some years I don't see at all. And for good measure, we had another Philadelphia Vireo. Taking a look at the eBird checklist, from the West Spit in the morning, we had 71 species. For the Hawk Watch, we also had 71 species. At the Church Trail, we had 38 species. And at Firehouse Woods, we had 39 species. Taking a look at the Hawk Count Report for our Migrant Raptor totals, we had a really good flight today. We had 364 turkey vultures, 7 osprey, 101 bald eagles, including 51 that came in a single hour, 15 northern harriers, 5 sharp-shinned hawks, 6 cooper's hawks, 1 northern goshawk. For beautios, we had 453 broadwings and 18 red tails. And for falcons, we had 5 kestrels and 4 merlins for a total of 979 migrating raptors today. That brings the May total to 10,154 and the season total to 46,979. We had quite a few new species for the season today, which were alder flycatcher and morning warbler at the West Spit. From the Hawk Watch, we had common nighthawk, American white pelican, and olive-sided flycatcher. And that flycatcher, actually, someone spotted all the way out on the other side of the parkway. And with the spotting scope, you could barely see it, let alone identify it. But uh, you could see enough field marks to confirm that it was an olive-sided flycatcher with that kind of dark vested appearance that they have on the front. And on the back, it turned at one point and we could see the white patches on the sides of the rump. So a really good spot of a really distant bird and uh, 
something that I think might be my first one ever for the county. I'm not 100% sure, but certainly my first ever for the Hawk Watch. And also new for the season in the evening were Philadelphia Vireo and Yellow-Bellied Flycatcher. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking rainy with a high in the low 60s. Winds south-southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Chance of rain 100%. So the winds are looking good, but it looks like it's just going to rain the whole day. So that should prevent any sort of raptor flight, especially since this time of year, the things we're getting are things like broad wings and turkey vultures and bald eagles, um, rather than things like exhibitors and falcons, which might push through the rain. So wouldn't expect any raptor flight tomorrow if it's rainy like they're predicting. However, the songbird migration looks excellent again tonight, especially if there's some rain moving in early morning. Um, if that hits before sunrise, maybe it'll knock some birds down. And in any case, there should be plenty of warblers and other songbirds around again tomorrow. So it might be a good day to be out in the woods looking for those if you don't mind getting wet. For Sunday, it's looking mainly sunny with a high in the low 70s. Winds west-northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, so I would expect moderate migration. And for Monday, it's looking mainly sunny with a high in the upper 50s and a light to moderate northeast wind. So we'd only expect light migration and the count may be held from Frisbee Hill. All right, well, we knew today would be a good day and it certainly didn't disappoint. A lot of first of years and some nice rarities showing up with the olive-sided flycatcher and the American white pelican, among others. There's also a Hearman's gall that was found over at Sotus Point. So that's a uh, really exciting discovery over there and a lot of people i hope got to see that we're still right in the peak time of the spring songbird migration so i hope you can get out birding soon and maybe i'll see you in the field or out on the hawk watch platform from lyco birds this is david brown thanks for watching